Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of I am Malala, chapter 1, as free as a bird. Malala says that she is just like all other girls, but she has some special talents. Like, she says I have double joints, so I can always crackle my knuckles on my fingers and in toes. And particularly if anyone is looking at it and if they give a odd expression, she says, I just enjoy watching that. And she is a very strong girl physically that she can even beat up uh, children twice her age. And she loves cupcakes but she does not like candy. And she also feels that dark chocolates are not that very sweet. So we should not call them chocolate itself because chocolate means something which is sweet. And she also hates eggplant. Eggplant means brinjal and green peppers, that is chilies. But she loves pizza. And she feels that uh, uh, Bella from Twilight, it's a animated uh, program. She feels it is too fickle. And she does not understand how Bella chose Edward as a friend. Because she feels that Edward is boring. And even her friends in Pakistan say that uh, they are not uh, much impressed with Edward uh, and she does not care much about makeup and jewelry because she is not that girly girly type uh, but her favorite color is pink and of course she spends a lot of time in front of the mirror trying different styles with her hair uh, and in fact when she was young she had tried to improve her skin complexion by uh, applying uh, honey, rose water and uh, buffalo milk uh, and she says that when she puts the milk on her face, it used to smell very bad. But because she wanted to have a better complexion, she has tried all that. And she also says that if you go and check any boy's backpack, it will always be a mess. And even if you see the boy's uniform, it will be dirty. And she says that it is not her opinion, it is the truth. And she belongs to this Pashtan tribes. And uh, these people are from Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan. Her father's name is Ziauddin and her mother's name is Turpikai. And they are from the mountain villages. Uh, but after they married, they came to Mungara, Ming uh, Mingora, uh, which is the largest city in Swat Valley. And this Swat Valley is in the northwest Pakistan. Uh, and it is in this place that she was born. And she says that Swat is a place known for its beauty because tourists will come there to see the tall mountains, the beautiful green hills and the crystal clear river. And uh, they have named her Malala after a famous great uh, Pashtun heroine called as Malalai. And this Malalai had inspired her countrymen with her courage who fought against the British. But she says, I don't believe in fighting. But her brother, elder brother, who is 14 years old, his name is Kushal, he will always come and irritate her. But she says, I will not go and fight with him, but he will come and fight with me. And according to Newton, he has said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, when my brother comes and fights with me, I will fight him back. And she has already said that she can even uh, defeat uh, uh, people who are twice her age. So we can understand who will be the winner. And she says, now whenever uh, Kushal one comes and fights with me, his expectation is I must fight with him. So I will oblige him. I will also fight with him. And for what all we will fight is, we will fight for the TV remote, for the works which we have to do at ho home and who is better in studies and who is the last who hate the cheesy warts uh, and something like that. For what all children will fight, we used to fight for that. Her next yeah, older brother is Atal who is 10 years old and uh, he is not that very irritating. In fact, he uh, we make him only to chase the cricket ball which we will kick out of the bounds. Uh, and he will always put certain rules for doing that work but he will be the one who is going and picking those balls and throwing back to us. Uh, and when she was young and when these boys were there, she had a talk with God. She used to ask the God why he did not shake when he gave birth to her, uh, whether she will be as free as a bird. Because before her, he had sent these two boys. Uh, and she says, only I know how I felt. Because it is very inconvenient being uh, born after two boys. Uh, because when she wants to study, they will make a lot of noise. Uh, 
when she goes to brush her teeth in the morning they'll come and bang the bathroom door but uh, she made a peace with her brothers uh, at least with these two and uh, they will decide who has to have the better hand by playing the cricket match up and she says at home in pakistan the three of them will run like rabbits they'll run in the roads they will run uh, and chase each other they'll play games like tag and they'll also play and play another game called mango this mango is a hopscotch game which we called which they called as chintak meaning frog so it is like frog jumping game and they'll also play thief and police uh, sometimes they will go and ring the bell of the neighborhood houses and run and go and hide and watch their reaction uh, but anyway their favorite game is cricket they'll play cricket in the day they'll play cricket in the night they'll play in the road they'll play on the rooftop because the rooftop will be flat and it's very convenient to play and when they don't have a proper cricket ball what they will do is they'll take any old straw, uh, socks and they will stuff all the rubbish in that and make it like a ball and they'll draw the wickets on the wall with a chalk and uh, since atal is the youngest boy he only will go and fetch the ball which falls in the roof of the other houses when he goes like that sometimes there will be balls which have fallen from the neighborhood houses he'll pick all the balls and come back grinning and if we tell them why did you take other balls it is not us he'll say so what yesterday they took our ball no so today i brought up whatever they have because if they are playing and if they ball falls in the neighborhood roof the other boys who come before them they'll take their ball and go so he did not feel there's anything wrong in doing it and she says anyway boys are boys uh, and they cannot be civilized as girls uh. and whenever she is not in a mood to play with the boys she'll go and meet safina who's in the neighborhood she'll tap twice on the wall which is in between their both houses and safina also will reply then uh, they will uh, slip they'll just go out because there's a small opening between their houses they will whisper through that uh, wall and they will talk sometimes they will even go to one person's house or the other person's house and they will watch their favorite tv show and uh, their favorite tv show is shakalaka boom boom where a boy will be with a magic pencil they love the show and uh, of course they will make small small shoe box dolls with matchsticks and uh, cloths uh, and uh, she says that safina is a playmate from the time she was 8 years old and safina is 2 years younger than her but they were very close and they'll try to copy each other like whatever she has safina will try to have and whatever safina has malala will try to have but she feels that one time safina went too far because malala had a pink plastic cell phone which her father had given her suddenly this was missing and it was her favorite possession and that afternoon when she went to play with safina she saw same phone in her house when she asked about it to safina safina said that it was hers and that she had brought it from the bazaar but malala did not believe it so she got very angry and so without thinking she took a pair of safina's earrings on that day and next day she took a necklace of safina's of course malala has already said she is not interested in jewelry so she did not do it out of the love for the jewelry but since safina had taken hers she felt she should take hers so she could not control herself but after a few days when she came back home she saw her mother was upset and her mother was not even willing to look at her because the mother had found that trinkets in her small cupboard and had written them this made her to cry and say safina was the first person to take from me but the mother was not uh, uh, convinced she said you are older malala so you only must be an example to safina then i went to then malala went to her room and she was filled with shame and she was wondering about what will happen if her father comes and knows about what she had done because she was her father's favorite and she did not want uh, her father to be disappointed with her but when her father came he understood that she was already very upset and afraid so he did not raise his voice or he did not scold her but he tried to console her by telling the mistakes which the great heroes had made when they were children and those heroes were mahatma gandhi and muhammad ali jinnah the founder of pakistan and he also said what his father had told him his father had told him a child is a child when he is a child even if he is a prophet that is even if he is a great prophet who the whole world will follow when he was a child he would have behaved only like a child and then she thinks about her pastutanwali code because that is the way these people will live 
one part of their code is badala which is taking revenge it is insult for insult and death for death and it will keep on going if anyone does anything to you you will do the same to them but she says i don't like taking revenge because after taking revenge i also will feel bad so i decided not to take part in the badala so i have decided not to take any revenge on anyone so i went and said sorry to safina and her parents and she expected even safina to say sorry to her and give back her phone but safina did not say sorry or give back the phone and uh, since uh, she was uh, uh, adamant to follow the rule not to take any revenge she did not speak much about her phone but she was a bit uh, upset but soon safina and she got back uh, as friends and they started play- playing with the neighborhood children like uh, games like uh, running and chasing games and all that and they lived in the part of the city which was not in the center of the city and there was a lot of grasslands near their house with lots of statues of broken lions and broken old stupas and hundreds of big big stones which will look like umbrellas so during summer they will play parpartuni which is a game of hide and seek and in the winter time they will make these stones as snowmen and their mother will call them to drink nice hot milky tea which is made with cardamom and all that till then they'll be playing and uh, she says i always remember in my house there'll be lots of people it will be either the neighbors or relatives or friends of her father and uh, there are so many relatives like cousins male female all they'll all come from the mountains where their parents grew up or from the nearby town and uh, first they were stay- staying in a small house later on they moved to a big house where she was even given her own bedroom but her bedroom had never been hers because she'll always find any cousin sleeping on the floor but she says it is our way of living hospitality is very important in pashtan wali code and uh, you always when you open a door you will find a visitor in your house that is the way they live and when these people come all the women will gather at the back of the house there is a big veranda they will cook and laugh and talk and they'll talk about new clothes jewelry and the other ladies in the neighborhood and father and the men will sit in the guest room and they'll drink tea and talk politics she will be playing with the children but slowly she'll go away from the women's quarters and join the men and they she'll find everything very exciting and important she did not understand the politics but somehow she loved sitting there near her father's feet and drinking the tea and listening to the conversation and the men will debate on the politics and she will be hypnotized by their talk because it is about the world which is beyond their place and she loved listening to it but slowly she leave that place and again come back to the women and this place will be entirely different because here the women will talk in a gentle voice almost like whispers and sometimes they will laugh sometimes of course they la- laugh even louder but what really amuses her is the women will not be wearing the head scarves and veils and they will be showing their long dark hair and their faces will be made up with pretty lipstick and henna which are all very lovely to see generally these people will uh, follow the code of purda where they'll cover themselves in public so you cannot see all this uh, and her mother and some women they'll only drape their faces which is called as nijab but uh, they are some people uh, most of them will uh, wear this burkas which are covering their head and face and people will not be able even to see their eyes some will even wear black gloves and socks so that not even a bit of their skin is shown out and uh, generally she has observed women walking behind their husbands and uh, when any man come in front of them they will immediately lower their gaze they will not do, look uh, even directly at them and uh, not only that girls who are playing with them will slowly disappear as they reach their teenage and they will start wearing these veils which cover them up all this she will see but when she sees all these women sitting here so freely with their face so radiant it is as though she is seeing another new world not only that she says i am not very good in helping in the kitchen like uh, she has tried chopping vegetables and cleaning dishes, uh, dishes and all that but she cannot do it for a long so she'll run away and she always will wonder like how i will hide myself in a wheel in future and uh, she thinks that it is not fair to ask the women to cover themselves because it is unfair and also uncomfortable and when she was young she used to tell her parents about whatever other girls do is okay i will never cover my face and uh, she also felt that her face is her identity 
so why should she cover her face because it is like covering her identity her mother who is a very traditional woman will be shocked on hearing it some of her relatives thought that she was bold but some said that she is rude but her father will always say malala will live as free as a bird he wanted that that way that life for her and he told that to everyone and she says i'll always go and join the other children and she loves going to the kite flying contest where the boys will skillfully fly the kite and cut the competitor's kite string and she says it's a very exciting game because uh, it is very unpredictable you will think you will cut the kite but the kite will escape but suddenly another kite will come which they can kite and she says it's really beautiful and at the same time it is very sad when you see nice pretty kites falling to the ground and she feels maybe in this i can see my future where like these kites just because i am a girl i will also be cut and made to fall down but whatever her father says she knows very well that she and safina will be expected only to cook and clean for their brothers and so she says i i am ready for that because in her community when they become old they can study and become doctors also but female doctors are expected to take care only of female patients and they can never be lawyers or engineers or fashion designers or artists or anything what they want to be in fact once they grow up they will not be allowed even to go outside their homes without a male companion so someone has to some male has to come with them if they are going out and as she watches her brother run on the roof to catch the kites she will be wondering how free i really can be uh, can i be like my brothers but she knew that she was the apple of her father's eye and she says this is very rare for a pakistani girl because in pakistan when a boy is born they'll make it uh, like a celebration guns are fired in the air and uh, gifts will be placed placed for the baby in the cot and uh, moreover the boy's name will be written on the family tree but when a girl is born in a pakistan no one will come and visit the parents and in fact everyone will come and sympathize the mother but her father was different the moment she was born he wrote her name in the family tree that family tree had names for the uh, past 300 years and in the 300 years only names of boys were written in the family tree and her name was the first name to enter into that family tree and uh, when she was young he'll always sing a very famous pashtun song which comes under her name o oh, malalai of my ward he will sing rise once more to make pashtuns understand the song of honor your poetic words turn worlds around i beg you rise again this is where he they sing about the famous heroine malalai who fought against the british and he will say come back again and teach all these pashtuns to stand for their honor i beg you come back and when she was young she never used to understand the meaning of the song but but when she grew up she understood that malalai was a hero to everyone and a role model and she also wanted to learn something from her and when she started reading at the age of 5 her father will be very proud of her and he will show to all his uh, friends and say come look at this girl she is going to fly in the sky and i will also like she will say is i will also pretend to be embarrassed but she loved the praises which her father used to tell about her and she says that i am luckier than most of the girls because her father ran a school it's a very simple school with only a blackboard and chalk and it was next to a small river which was smelly but according to her it is a paradise and her parents used to tell her that even before she could talk she will toddle to these classrooms and she will even lecture and uh, she will get into any of the classrooms sit along with the older girls and uh, she will listen to what is being taught and uh, as she was growing up she longed to wear those uniform what the girls were wearing a salva kameez a long uh, deep blue tunic and loose white pants and white head scarves her father had started the school 3 years before she was born and in that school he was a teacher accountant and principal as well as janitor handyman and chief mechanic that is he had to do all the work he will climb up the ladder to change the light uh, light bulbs and if the pump is broke he will go down the well and repair it 
once when she saw him disappear down the well she started crying thinking that he will never come back and at that time she did not understand why her father was doing all the work but later on when she grew up she understood that they did not have enough money to employ people separately because they already had to pay the rent and salaries so much money was not there in fact they had very less money even for food and that is why they'll have very little for dinner also but the school was her father's dream so all of them were happy to live that dream up and finally she says the time came for me to join the classes and i was so happy because all she had only grown up in the school and the school was her world and her world was the school and so she was very happy to enter into the school this is uh, what she says in chapter 1 of i am alala if you have anything more to add on to what i've said please write it in the comment box like the video share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe thank you